Hello, this is Dan, Midwest Technical Sales. What we decided to do today is to show you a, a couple alternative ways of how to get a picker out of a TL4000. This particular uh, platform is used in the IBM world, some of the HP, sort of the Sun. It has different firmware and stuff like that on it, but the concept's the same. The body is the same. So the first thing that's happened is that we had the Magic Genie come out here, and they took the cover off, okay? And there's a lot of screws in the cover. So, we usually save them in little things like this. You'll want to do something with them just to make sure that you have them and you know where they are. So we do that. Um, the tools uh, that you need for this, um, in the shop we use, you know, the smaller drivers. And you'll need a T10X, okay, Torx 10. And you'll also need a number one Phillips head. We use these in the drivers for that purpose. I also have a longer uh, Torx to remove the picker itself from it. And I'll show you how to do that later. We've, we've got it disabled right now. We can take it out, but we're going to show you how to do it. And then you might need a, just a longer Phillips head as well. So those are the tools you're, you're going to need. Um, we have the magazines removed uh, just for clarity. And this is loose on the front. Greg will, Greg will take out one screw and he'll show you how to uh, disassemble this and then I'll talk about the picker a little bit later. So on this thing, we're going to go ahead uh, and uh, get, turn it over to Greg here. Okay, I'm going to show you how to remove the front panel and actually pull the picker out. Now there's four screws that hold the plastic part of the front panel on. We've already removed those. So I'll just pop that off. And then holding the metal part on, there's three countersunk screws across the bottom, and then two on the side that hold it to this frame right here. We've removed all of these except for the one. Before I remove this one, I'm just going to pull the cable out, and that's just pressed in there, quite easy to get out. I'll remove that last screw. put it in a little green container and then this will just lift out and out of the way. The next thing we have to do is remove the cable that's connected to the picker. Uh, can you see that there? I'll just pull the little clip up and away. That was right down here pull that little clip, we'll save that, and then this cable is also just pressed in, just pull that up and away. And then we'll just slide the picker assembly out to the front, and it's ready to go. Okay, thanks Greg. So that's removing the entire picker assembly. Typically what happens with pickers is that these channels in here get uh, dirt on them and dust and crud. And if you're close enough that you can hear a picker run, you'll hear a chatter go ch 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 So the chatter will cause little gears in here to break, okay? And if that happens, then, you know, you either have to replace the gears or replace the entire uh, picker assembly. So this picker part separates from the base, okay? <clears throat> so as you separate this, and what, what it does, <clears throat> it's held on with a um, washer, a, a plastic washer, a metal washer, and then a tiny washer that goes into the indent here, goes on here, screws into the picker, and screws down here. <clears throat> so what will happen um, if you have a catastrophic failure? Let's say the picker gets jammed because a piece of media got in and, and whatever. You may break these gears on the bottom, okay? They're plastic gears, and those may break. Uh, a, a tooth or two might come out. The second thing that would happen is that there's a plastic, what we call a ladder gear here, and that gear um, rotates on the picker 
uh, it, it, it allows the picker to rotate, and as it rotates, it moves it ahead on this, this thing here. <clears throat> so this could be an issue for you, too. Um, I guess one of the things uh, to do, we can talk you through and find out if it's a picker gear or if it's uh, most likely this bottom picker assembly. It's a lot easier just replacing the picker than it is the assembly because you don't have to take the front end off. And we just took it off for clarity reasons. Um, if, if you can do some preventive maintenance on it and hear a picker chatter, you can take the magazines out and get your hand in here and you'll see the uh, this picker goes up and down in here, okay? And so it goes up and down on these rails. These rails need to be cleaned off, okay? Like with a cotton swab or something. You can use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. It's just fine. Any of those things to clean it off. There's a little rail back here. So clean the rails off. And then we put a lubricant on there and any light-based weight Teflon lubricant. This happens to be Remington gun oil. You could use Crawl, any, any kind of a real light oil. And you just want to dab it on here and lubricate these things as a preventive thing. Uh, it's not going to fix it if it's broken already, but if you wanted to do some preventive things. So the other thing um, to cover while we're here is um, emergency magazine removal. And the magazines fit in here and they lock in place. Okay? So there's a little arm back over here that's activated that releases the magazines. And it's coupled to a piece of stainless steel that you'll need one of these little air things um, on, uh, like you get on, a, on an air can. You only need to push it in about an eighth of an inch, but you do have an emergency magazine release here. For example, if you had to just release the magazine for some reason, got jammed, got locked, you've got data on your magazines you want to send in for repair, you can get them out. Okay? So that's uh, a little bit on the, the magazine removal. Also, there are some new style magazines, and on some of our other um, videos, uh, one of them is, uh, is checking your nuts, okay? And the nuts we're referring to are on the bottom of the older style magazines, okay? The new style magazines have eliminated, they've identified this as a problem. The new magazines do not have these screw, screws and nuts on them. So they're very, very stable, okay? Now, the only thing they haven't figured out is on the magazine with the mail slot. And they just haven't engineered that yet to not have any um, screws holding it down. So you do have screws and nuts on one of the magazines on the TL4000 that has um, the mail slot in it. But uh, if you have the older style, when you have it out, get yourself a very small Screwdriver, make sure these guys are tight, and if they're loose, snug them up. And you can put some blue Loctite on them. If uh, you don't have blue Loctite, uh, possibly, I don't know if anybody has fingernail polish anymore, but anything to stop these things from loosening up again. Um, we also have a number of these pickers um, that we sell that are brand new pickers. This is a new library, never been used, brand new picker. And we do have refurbished pickers too, that uh, either came out of used units or that we've repaired, you know, with the little gears that sort of get uh, messed up in there. So I hope this is helpful for you. And if you have any questions, feel free to give us a buzz. Uh, you'll see uh, Richard will put some stuff on there with our phone number and things like that. So thanks for your time.